Geekcast, everything sci-fi, fantasy, geek culture, and pop culture commentary. Who do we have in this virtual studio today? Casual Davey on Bussy. Phoenix Sparks. The one-armed bandit, Corey Davis. You still got one arm, Corey? <laughs> I'm still healing. Still, still healing. healing. <laughs> like, what is happening here? All right, so let's start out with what, Corey? What is our first topic today? The show or movie you recommended, which was called Everything Everywhere All at Once. Cool. Now, who saw that film? I saw it. Ooh. Phoenix, you saw it too? I did. Oh, Ooh. Phoenix, I'm Phoenix. surprised. Because you had finals and everything. I'm like, how did you do that? They're uh, done now. <laughs> so now it's all on Davion. Davion, Davion. Did you see it? Uh, I did not see it, okay? Wow. And you know why. I do? Yeah. Why? Friday, funeral, Saturday, um, the shoot, Sunday, I needed a rest. <laughs> Okay. So, Phoenix, <laughs> <laughs> tell us, what did you think of this movie? Um, I thought, well, as the, as the title insinuates, there are a lot of different components. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was a really great mix of everything. I thought it was a cinematic masterpiece, to be honest, a really amazing display of all the talent of everyone involved. Um, both from like a technical standpoint mm -hmm. and acting standpoint. So, and it was refreshing, honestly, really unique. Mm. Interesting. Very well. I guess I will add my two cents in because I pretty much love anything Michelle Yeoh does. Mm -hmm. However, I was conflicted with this film. Interesting. It was the first half. It wasn't that there were too much going on. There were like a lot, a lot of themes. And it didn't really quite catch my interest because they tried to do too much at once. But then as the film progressed, kind of related a lot more. Okay. I, I feel like this film was made for anyone who has foreign parents. If your parents are immigrants or anything, this film would definitely resonate with you because I resonated a lot with... Uh, the themes of the movie. But overall, I think they incorporated a lot of family multiverse. It was just a fun film ride, hard drama, suspense. It was literally, like Fina said, a cinematic masterpiece. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, don't mind that. That's jazz. <laughs> <laughs> um, and jazz is a cat, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who all don't know, Princess Jasmine. Um, I would agree with both of you. I think there are a lot of themes going on that it's like, okay, what is the point? Where are we going? But at the same time, it was brilliant. I mean, it was it was riding on in the this thin line between insanity, doing too much, but even then, you you liked it for some reason. Of course, Marcel, you, she's she's just amazing. So. Um, but I could see people being upset with the film in a sense of like, like, what are you trying to say? Because there's so many things being said, I think you could easily be like, okay, which theme should I hold on to? And then the villain, at some point, the villain aspect, I don't want to give anything away, but it gets, you know, what does the villain actually want? Usually somewhere in a film, it's super early, simply defined what a villain wants and their objective. And, it, and I don't think that that was too clear. And I watching the whole thing, I still don't think it was clear. What do you guys, did you guys get that, any confusion there? Or do you think everything was plain? 
to see. It was definitely a fast paced film, so I could understand the confusion. However, there were a lot of symbolic cues that people mm-hmm. could pick up on. And also, I think even though there were these fictional components, a lot mm-hmm. of it related to social commentary of issues we all face mm-hmm. since everything's at our fingertips these days and we all have endless options seemingly so but yeah i it was a little hard to follow at certain points i feel like at the crescendo of the movie where the villain does reveal their grand plans i thought it was clear Mm-hmm. I thought with everything the movie had going on, it kind of convoluted the message a little bit. Okay. But I I feel conflicted with this film. I was thinking that Davion mentions a lot of weird films, but for you to mention this weird film, I was conflicted because I really didn't understand why you wanted us to watch this film. But I think uh, they did a good job of representing certain messages at certain points but with everything else going on it kind of got lost in the film and and all the to be clear when you watch this at least my opinion all the messages are clear i think the only confusing thing is like trying to put how does all this work together for a complete thought and i think that could be pure madness or pure genius depending on how you decide to walk away from it um, but you know, audience, you be the judge. Check check out this film, and and see if, see what you think about it. And I'm surprised, mm-hmm. Davion, that um, I know you had a lot going on, but I figured you might be like, no, this is brilliant because you love everything having to do with um, multiverse. Like you're the multiverse prince. You're the prince of the multiverse. Every movie that comes out. Davion has a breakdown when it comes to different universes. So when you get a chance, it'll be super interesting to see what you got to say because you put the seal of approval if it if it passes your bar. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that. If you had to give it a rating out of one to five Gs, what would you give it, Phoenix? Oh. And- mm. It's so hard to judge this film. <laughs> It's a hard one. Maybe a four? Mm. How about oh, you? Yeah. See, I want to agree with the four. I think this is my issue with the film before I give it a, a, a rating. I feel like it's going to do very well outside of America mm-hmm. in the American market. I don't think it's going to do that well. I just don't think it's an American film. Mm. So... With that being said, just judging the film alone, I want to give it a four. I'll give it a four. I'll give it a four. There are a lot of issues. I feel like this this is one of those films you have to watch more than once to truly appreciate it. But on first watch, I'll give it a four. Gotcha. Uh, I think that's that's generous and amazing. And I, it's hard to give a hard to give a range just because. Like the editing was ridiculous. Whoever edited that piece of work, there's no way they're not going to be up for an Oscar. Just on the editing. Um, ah man, uh, three and a half. Oh yeah, it went down five. Hmm. I'm surprised. I thought you were going to give me oh. one and a half. I thought she was going. To I mean, give that's four. the thing. They're like the editing was a five. Um, Creativity, a five. You know, trying to add all the other things to it, but I think the confusion factor, and it's like, well, where are you going to it? Like, I think that um, if you spend 30 minutes out of the whole film, like, okay, well, where are you going? What's the point? I, I, that's not a good feeling. So that kind of brought it down. I mean, all right, you know what? For sake of argument, let's just say a four. I keep it moving. Well, like, isn't the confusion supposed to simulate like everything all at once? Like, it's too much, right? Mm-hmm. Well, see, now you saying that, <laughs> Phoenix. Like, you, now you sold it to me. Wow, that's brilliant. They made me feel the the title of the film. You know, I didn't think of it that way. I didn't think of it that way. 
So, yeah. but yeah. Th- maybe Corey, to your point, we need to. I need to see it again. <laughs> you know, and then go from there. It, Not it a problem. literally was everything, everywhere, all at once. It literally was. <laughs> it, it really, it really was. It really was. Um, actually, man, I want to go on to another topic, but now you guys are really making me think because <laughs> if you think about love, relationships, and family, right? You have a gush of all these things coming at you all at once called life and to still keep that balance so wow now i feel more confident in my four i might even say 4.5 now (laughs) i'm actually thinking saying 4.5 because phoenix did make that point like if you include the title it really it really does encompass the film like i it's i feel like it's an underrated movie that's why i don't think it's going to do so well in this market but the world international market it's going to going to sell a lot and it's more. and it's leaving the theaters some theaters aren't showing it already so that's already mm-hmm. a sign of it kind of leaving okay what else we have on the table today uh our father a netflix documentary oh, yeah my God. i started to watch it and because as soon as you start watching it it's like oh, i know where you're going with it and i, I just couldn't do it I had to unplug. I started and I had to unplug. I'm like, oh. Oh, yeah. I'm on the same boat as you because when I was watching, I was like, eh, next. <laughs> Did anyone make it through? Like all the way through yet? Of course, you Corey made it through. <laughs> so what was it? What was it about this film, this documentary that made you? And it wasn't a full documentary. It was like a drama based on it wasn't a full documentary the way it was, it was a full documentary so this documentary was very real it mm-hmm. all started with uh the first lady that you meet jacoba ballard mm-hmm. who wanted to use dna testing to learn her her ancestry and with the plot I, I guess it's not a plot it's just a movie it's just an accurate documentary where they use real phone calls all the people are real all, everyone in this documentary was really affected by this doctor's decision and as you go on into the documentary because i don't want to spoil it for anyone mm-hmm. it's it's a lot it's a lot to, to take and because i am in the medical field i found this to be particularly interesting because mm-hmm. there are no laws governing what he did at the time there are now but the aftermath of everything i feel as though is basically a slap in the face to not only women but to the healthcare field in general yeah well not only a slap face to healthcare but mm-hmm. also um without giving too much away are we allowed to do spoilers can we do spoilers for not this yet. documentary, I, I think so, because no one watched it, no one's going to finish watching it, but I don't know about but the But it's kind of hard not to start watching it to know where it's going. Like, it's yeah. kind of like, kind of, but you know what? For someone that might not know, check it out for yourself. But it was like, okay, I, I know where you're going with it. This, you know, um, that wasn't the only case that that ever happened as well. Correct, but it's not to the magnitude of this one case because this one case is still ongoing. Mm-hmm. So, so, mm. so that's that's crazy, and you'll never get the full thing of that. Um, but, but all that being said, no, it's interesting. There are a few, like for instance, there's actually a documentary. Well, I don't think it's a full documentary, but because once you start adding the actors and doing, you know the phone messages, but some people are acting out. It's like a docudrama in a way. Um, Marilyn Monroe. Mm -hmm. They did one on Marilyn Monroe. I didn't, I got through like half of it. And it was interesting because again, they use real audio tape from um, actual people and from actual interviews of trying to discover what really happened. Um, How was she, killed, murdered, um, was it suicide, was it really drugs, and try to get to, to the bottom of it. And allegedly in this documentary, there are things that were never in the public as far as information that now is in the, in the public. I feel that also because documentaries or 
well, I don't know if there's another name for him, this particular style. Uh, a lot of papers are sealed after certain times of people's death and everything like that. And because there are a lot of things, I'm sure new information about JFK, all the things we question, it's all gonna come out in our lifetime because a lot of those people are a lot older and um, we're gonna see a lot more of this. You know, and like, oh wow, that's what really happened, oh wow. So. <laughs> It's funny you mention that. I just want to name drop a film I've recently, recently watched called mm -hmm. Operation Mincemeat, which was a real World War II operation. And because I'm a huge James Bond fan, the creator, Ian Fleming, this is one of his real cases where he served as one of the British Naval officers' uh, missions. So they actually declassified. So everything that you're saying is coming to light. And this is one example of that, which is a really good movie. What is it about? What is <laughs> it is about the most successful tactical deception in military history that the British used in order to gain the advantage over Hitler in World War II. That ended, started the end of Hitler's regime. Wow. So it was a very strategic piece that pushed the power in their balance. Oh, that's interesting. And Ian Fleming, as he was creating 007, you kind of see the Mm -hmm. uh, the inspirations from this one uh, mission. That's cool. So yeah, it's a it's a really decent take that we probably should talk about. <laughs> we probably should. I got. I would like to check that out. I'm a huge Bond fan as well. So especially the old Bond stuff. I think there's something about it that's just uh, the classics. If you get a chance to watch um, those networks that do like the. James Bond all day, all weekend thing. It's worth it. It's worth it. I've seen every film and not film, so I digress. <laughs> <laughs> so, was Love, Death, Robots? Yes. Yeah. Did anybody see that? Um, I think this, that's a show, right? I think I've only seen a couple episodes. It's on Netflix. Nobody yeah. seen Love, Death, Robots? It didn't really hold my attention. I, I watched agree. it. Definitely. I was not into it. Nope. Really? Not even any of them. They usually start I mean, really strong on the first seasons. two. If anyone like knows the series, the first two are usually banging. The third ones, yeah. blah blah blah. They definitely mix some like weird things in there, and then they end up with one that's really strong. Um, this season started out strong, weak, and then ended okay. But yeah. I noticed even the weak ones, the animation is great. So if you like animation and just like the art of it, that is consistent no matter what. Some of the stories start nowhere and end nowhere. Right. right. So that's kind of weird. Well, I guess I like that you don't necessarily have to watch every single episode, right? You can just kind of pick it up wherever within the season. And um, I guess it's it's better for people who, who don't have time to follow a right. series all the way through. Yeah. Um, it, I can totally short. agree. With some of the, yeah, it's, huh? it's low commitment. Low commitment. <laughs> absolutely. But this one was kind of short. Like I think it was like six episodes. I think so. I just didn't find it all that thought provoking. No. Like, like entertaining, yeah. Mm -hmm. I will say this: season one was very thought provoking because it was just basically showing different stories and different atmospheres, and it focused more on love, sex, and robots. Mm -hmm. Season two was more mediocre mm -hmm. because you see that they were kind of pushing the star factor into it because you had a lot of actors that actually cameoed in these mm -hmm. little oh. short mini films. Mm -hmm. I mean, mini series episodes like Michael B. Jordan was in season two. Uh, when he chopped his arm off or something like that. Um, it was mm -hmm. a couple of other actors I can't think of, but that was more star power type episode with season two. This episode, I mean, this season, I really think it was more pushing more artistic aspects mm -hmm. in a way. It wasn't pushing more on the celebrities. It wasn't pushing nothing more. It was more pushed on the artsy aspect of of animation even though it had the gore aspect, but it was more pushing on that part. Was um, Rosaria Dawson one of the voices? This one? I'm not I'm not 100% sure. I wouldn't be surprised. I need you to be 100% sure, because that's going to determine if I watch it or not. 
<laughs> but, oh no, I was about to look it up too. I was like, we need to know. <laughs> and I'm going to check it out. I wouldn't say you have to watch it because there's just there's so much there. You might love it, you might hate it. Mm. It's no secret Wait. I'm a huge Rosario Dawson fan, but the consensus <laughs> that I've been hearing about the show, season one is better than season two, but it hasn't no one has given it a description that made me want to watch this show. And even I, like, yes. Yeah, at least listening to you guys. Your lady the um your Rosario the, is there. She is? Yes. Okay. I will so. watch it tonight. <laughs> He's yeah. like only for that. <laughs> and there's a love scene in that one, so there you go, Corey. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, Corey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now he's and, motivated. Now, can I interject for a minute? Sure. Dramatic? What's happening? No. What? Last Friday, a, sh- a film came out on Disney Plus mm-hmm. called Chippendale's Rescue Rangers. Mm-hmm. I had my opinions about this film. I really hate it. I thought I was going to be like, yo, I'm really going to hate this film. I'm really going to bash it. Did anybody see it out of this group? No. What is it about? You ever watch the old cartoon show called Chippendale's Rescue Rangers? No. Okay. <laughs> Why are you making it so deep, man? Yes. <laughs> we should definitely God. talk about it in <laughs> video, but... <laughs> because while sitting there watching this movie, mm-hmm. my judgment of this movie, I have to take back because I really trashed it before he even premiered. And to the audience, I apologize. I am. They, did, they didn't know you bashed it, so they, you, there's no reason to. Like, oh, they knew. They knew. In their mind. They knew. In their heart. No. No, because <laughs> I'm bashing the universe. something else. Oh, <laughs> so, my view on Chippendale Rescue Rangers, I have to pretty much give it some props to. They kind of introduced the whole Who Framed Roger Mab- Rabbit concept to the film. I do like the fact that they have um, the, the uh, what's it, Lonely Island guys? I forgot the uh, two guys' names. Uh, Andy uh, Andy Samberg and his other project. And the sh- the movie was good. They had a lot of cameos. Okay. That wasn't Disney. <laughs> a okay, lot well, of cameos. We'll save it for the next show. But but do you say we but, should watch it? We should watch it. Now. You should watch it. Okay. Yes, you should watch it. So <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it like that. Thank you. The most dramatic description of Chipping Dale's so Rescue Rangers in dramatic. cinematic history. <laughs> Whatever. I don't care what all three of y'all say. Oh, He's like so much attitude. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if y'all just because I have an attitude. Oh. Being sassy over here. <laughs> all right, what's the next film or the show? Uh, this is our city. Yeah, right? we own the city. We own the city on HBO Max. My bad. <laughs> Did anyone watch this one? Nope. Mm-hmm. 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 Besides me? Nope. Go ahead, Corey. Oh, man. You guys are missing a good one. So this is based on a true story. It's a mini series of uh, Gun Force, Gun Street Force of a rural department in Baltimore City. And this film depicts their pretty much journey of their downfall. And with, is his name John Rosenthal? I can't remember. He was um, Shane from The Walking Dead. He is a very good actor. He plays one of the protagonists of this gun force. Uh, gun Street. It's a weird name. I've never heard of a, a, a tactical force in the police department like this name. And they were disbanded because they were doing a lot of reckless stuff. And this series has a lot of star power. I feel as though everyone should watch it because it not only is based off a true story and not only because the acting is very, very uh, superb. There's no other word you can use than superb. I feel as though this talks about a lot of conversations that people have outside of the show that are incorporated into the show. 
so it only furthers the discussion within society. So if you do watch this, mm -hmm. you will see a lot of parallels and you will get a very good, interesting story of police, of what people are doing with the police force that we are not seeing in uh, current media. Ring the alarm. Hey, that was a good dis uh, description. So Vice actually did a mini documentary on the police department the show is based off of. Mm. And I, I'm not sure if the cases are still ongoing, but I thought it was really mind blowing to see the havoc this corruption had wreaked on that community because not only did it ruin a lot of individuals' lives, but also even um, trying to purge the police department of those people Mm -hmm. um their values their corrupt values have been passed along they were teaching new people like oh this is how you run game like this is how you be corrupt basically so oh, wow. really interesting if you want to see the backstory yeah that was in this show as well it's it's crazy how much goes into a department's corruption and this was frankly a time where baltimore was in the media because of certain uh, individuals such as the Freddie Gray case and uh, mm -hmm. uh, there was another another case that I can't think of right now, but it was a very prolific time of this department's downfall. It, I noticed, uh, Corey, lately you've been really into the documentaries and like uh, it's, been, it's been a vibe, like from Snowfall on, you've just been like, anything that kind of, even though that's not documentary, but you know, this whole like, this really happened and this is either artistic view of what really happened or are you in like a, I need information state of mind. I noticed that it kind of changed from the other stuff you were watching. Yeah, I feel as though there are a lot of discussions on social media. So if we're going to talk about what things should be like, we also have to incorporate the examples that have happened in real life so you can't have that discussion without it in, in a sense so i have been consuming that sort of media if that makes sense wow shots fired i had to put a little explosion i totally there. agree with you i totally you agree deep you got deep on our story <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry now let's talk about spider-man no stop <laughs> all right where's everybody's social media <laughs> Davion Bussey on Instagram, Davion Bussey on Facebook, and Shamar Williams on Twitter. AKA, and AKA the multiverse Prince. Right? We got to give you a multiverse title. Okay. Think about it. I don't know. Think about it. Think, think what you got. Uh, Sparks, what's your social media? Find me on Twitch and Instagram under Phoenix Sparks underscore official. And Corey. You can find me, Corey Davis, at IMGT3 on all the things. And on IG, you can find me, Michael7, Michael. And you're watching Geekcaster. Thanks, everybody, for checking us out. If you're watching on, on cable, right, 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 the network. Tell them, like, yeah, you, you like what's going on over there. Yeah, what are you doing? If you're watching us on IG, thank you. Um, leave comments. If you want to join us on the show, you're more than welcome to. We want to have some fans, supporters, friends, hop on that'd be great and of course like all the things youtube facebook find us love us and uh we appreciate everybody out there and continue to be yourself love yourself like yourself you know what i'm saying you're watching geekcaster are we gonna dance it out are we gonna dance yeah, it out yeah we're gonna dance it out over there hey 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 it's gonna be a geekcaster something